What's wrong, Leonie? Bad day of hunting got you down? Come on, Claude. You and I both know bad days don't happen to me. I was just thinking about the situation Lester finds itself in right now. That's an unusual topic coming from you. Go on. You know how both Regan and Gloucester territories have been the site of some pretty serious battles during this war? Well, I had the chance to talk to some people who live there, and it turns out their crops for the year are suffering because of it. Some villages even had their fields completely trampled in the struggle. Which, yeah, if that doesn't delay your field work, I don't know what will. Turns out that a lot of them are blaming the leader of the Alliance for what happened, though. No surprise there. It was my decision to go to war with the Empire, after all. Were it up to me, Lester would never see the flames of battle on its lands again. But things don't always work in absolutes. Now that you mention it, how saw him do? The area managed to stay pretty safe, right? Thankfully, yeah. Good. I know you'd be worried to death if something happened to your home. Hey, Claude? If I'm being honest, I don't really care much about this war, or what kind of relationships the different regions end up having with each other. But I can get behind the future you're fighting for. It's a good one. I can feel it in my gut. Though, that's kind of all I have to go on since I didn't get the education some of the others did. I appreciate that, Leone. And I get that you don't really care about a lot of this stuff. The one thing that matters most in the life of a commoner is what tomorrow's harvest is going to look like. I know that. But those people will get caught in the web I'm spinning for the future all the same. They won't have a choice but to fight. But... I know. If we don't fight, more and more innocent people will get struck down as collateral. Even so, there will be sacrifices no matter how much or how little we struggle. And most of those will end up being commoners. <sighs> I hope you stay on my side all the same, Leonie. And not just for your raw strength as a mercenary. I could use your perspective, too. My perspective? Think about it. You met the farmers in our land eye to eye and found out they were upset with me. I could never do that. Not in the position I'm in now. I guess you're right. That's why these kinds of things don't get addressed. They never even reach my ears. So I want you to help amplify their voices. Help me hear what the people have to say. As the ruler of Leicester, this is my number one priority. It's even more important to me than winning the war. And I'm more than glad to help you accomplish it. You know, you're really not like your run-of-the-mill noble. With a guy like you leading the Alliance, Leicester will be a better place. I just know it. Goodness, someone has been neglecting your care. Worry not, Fair Mare. I shall have your coat glistening in no time. Hmm? Hmm. Someone is doing a rather slapdash job of maintaining this equipment. Best take care of it. I wasn't aware you were responsible for cleaning the training gear, Ferdinand. I am not. Still, I cannot just leave it like this. And all will benefit if our equipment has a longer life. In that case, let me lend a hand. I actually enjoy this kind of thing. You have my thanks. Perhaps you might be so good as to start with that piece there. Say, Ferdinand, are you really a noble? I beg your pardon? What a horrid question! If I am not considered noble, then who is? After all, I am Ferdinand von Eyre. 
Yes, you've made that quite clear on many occasions. Then are you attempting to remind me that the succession of House Iyer's peerage is on hold? It is unkind to prod at a man's sore spot like that. Though, I will not hesitate to add, it does not mean my rank has been seized entirely. That's not what I mean, either. I understand you hold a noble's rank. It's just... Well, something about you as a person reminds me of a commoner. Such cheek! How can I remind you of base rabble when I strive without end to be the noblest of them all? Because you take the initiative to muck out stables and clean filthy training gear? Most nobles I know wouldn't dream of doing such things. They just have the rabble do it. It is my belief that nobility must serve as a model, nay, a beacon for the common folk. Doubly so in places like this, where people of different social status live alongside one another. It is precisely because of who I am that I must take the initiative. Such actions make a noble. A praiseworthy mindset. But do any nobles besides you actually put it into practice? I don't know about the Empire, but I'm dang sure lesser nobles don't think that way. Just seeing commoners makes the bile rise in their throats. I'd say they treat us like animals, except they actually seem to appreciate their animals. Lawrence also draws stark lines between nobles and commoners, but he's a little better than the others. Well, he is one of the nobles I find to be of merit. Regardless, your suspicion is correct. The Empire does have its fair share of nobles who bring shame to the appellation. But I will not allow them to set the standard for imperial nobility. Huh. Maybe there's some kind of cultural difference. Well, you are looking robust today. Let us get that coat of yours glowing, shall we? Hey, Ferdinand. Hello, Leone. Have you some need of me? I did a little detective work and learned something. You're the weird one. I fear I do not take your meaning. How exactly am I weird? You're a noble who delights in cleaning out stables and maintaining filthy equipment. And among the Imperial Nobles, you're the only one who does those kinds of things when it's not your specific responsibility. Which means, I was right. Empire and Alliance Nobles are all the same. Hmm. I think I understand what you're trying to say. Certainly among those you investigated, I am the only one who puts such ideas into action. But that is... If you would forgive me, a surface-level assessment. The reality beating at the heart of the matter is quite different indeed. Okay, what does that mean? True nobles think as I do, inside their heads. It just so happens that I am the only one who turned thought into deed on this particular occasion. So, if you believe those actions to be strange, you are saying the thoughts of all of them are strange as well. Which means you find all nobles of the world, myself among them, to be strange. Are you trying to confuse me? Because it's working. How do you reach a conclusion like that? I'm telling you, you're the only weird one. We appear to be arguing past one another. Seems like it, but I'm still right. Then I am left with no choice but to make you understand that I am the right sort of noble. And I'll have to make you understand there aren't actually any other nobles like you. <laughs> Goodness, whatever is the matter with me? It is out of character for me to be so obstinate. An understanding like this ought never be forced upon a person. My behavior was ill-befitting a noble, Leonie. Please, allow me to apologize. Nah, 
I got pretty heated there myself. At the end of the day, you're taking charge and being helpful, and that's what counts. It doesn't really matter if other nobles would ultimately do the same thing or not. So, sorry. You must think nothing of it. However, I believe a thought has just come to me. Ultimately, the problem is not me. It is that you mistrust the nobility as a whole. That being the case, I must redouble my efforts to put my philosophy into action, so as to make others of my stature understand the correct way of things. I am certain this will rid us of the selfish sort of nobles you imagine to be lurking around every corner. Wait, I mean, that'd be pretty great, but... If nobles start taking the initiative to work and stop looking down on commoners, doesn't that just... make them commoners? I'm not certain this market is worth my time. Although the variety of sellers and goods is at least moderately impressive. Hey there, Linhart. It's not every day I see you out shopping. Oh, I thought I might happen across some good finds. And what brings you here, Leone? Same. This is the best place to get affordable daily necessities and hunting equipment and the like. I myself am looking for items that might prove useful to my research, but alas, I have come up empty. Yeah, but the best finds usually don't jump right out at you. You gotta dig a little, you know? How about this? You keep looking, and I'll pitch in and help look at the same time. No, I've had enough for today. I'm so tired. <sighs> You never change, Linhart, and I mean never. Well, I'm going to be here for a while, so if I find anything I think you might want, I'll grab it. Ooh, that looks interesting. But how will you know what I want when I haven't... Oh, never mind. Hey, Linhart, I found something good. Wait, I thought you were going to take a nap. It would have been rude to make you look while I enjoyed a moment of repose. So I decided to see if I could find anything you might enjoy. Wait, is that a mask? Indeed. It's an animal mask you wear like so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks just like the real thing, which makes it amazing on you. Is it really that amusing? I thought you could wear it hunting and confuse your prey into thinking you were one of their own kind. <laughs> yeah, I could probably. <laughs> no, stop! My stomach! This wasn't quite the reaction I envisioned, but I suppose you're finding it amusing is good enough in and of itself. Sorry, sorry. I'll take it hunting with me next time I go, I promise. Although, I'll probably burst out laughing and scare off all the animals. <sighs> and what did you find for me? Oh, right! Check this out! Ta-da! At first, I just thought it was a weird-looking statue. But apparently, it's really old. Ah, I see. Yes, well, thank you. <laughs> Something about your reaction isn't sitting right. Is it not actually a good find? That I cannot tell without further investigation. But there's no denying it is a curious little thing. In any event, judging from its appearance... <laughs> okay, what's the deal? <laughs> I'm sorry. The statue is just so terribly amusing. <laughs> huh? Where are you going? And stop laughing! Hey, Linhart! Get back here! I can't believe Caspar foisted this on me. 
I don't even think Leone would have a use for it. But I suppose it couldn't hurt to ask. Hello, Leone. Are you meeting someone? I'm meeting you. Per your request? Please don't tell me you forgot. Ah, that's right. I have something to show you. Wait, did you actually forget? Oh, who can say? More importantly, take a look at this. I don't need it and was going to throw it out, but then I thought, perhaps you might have a use for it. Throw it out? What a waste! I'll definitely take it. Truly? I suspected you might say that, but still... You gotta use things that are usable, after all. Despite the fact that it's been written on so much that it now has utterly fulfilled the destiny of all paper? Eh, there's still plenty of white space. And even if it was packed to the gills, it'd still make good kindling. In any case, if you don't need it, I'm happy to take it off your hands. Deal? Deal. All yours. Okay, now I gotta give you something in return. Let me see what I've got here. Well, looks like all I have is this dealie I picked up in the woods a couple days back. Thought it might make a good arrowhead, but it's too hard for me to flint that properly. That... that's a piece of an ancient relic. How did you even find such a thing? Yes, well, I will gladly take it. Incidentally, would you mind telling me where you picked it up? Wow, you really want this, huh? I do indeed, Leone. Why, this is a discovery worthy of canceling my afternoon nap. Somehow I doubt that's gonna happen, but... Well, I'm happy if you're happy. And you have done me a service as well, by taking an unneeded item off my hands. It's funny how stuff like this works out. One person's trash really is another person's treasure. That is because you and I are what I would call a special pair. Care to explain that? One might say the things that matter to us are completely opposed. Even among all of our comrades, you'll not find a pair more... Well, except for... Though and then there's... You know what? We aren't so special after all. You are a very strange man, Linhart. But special or not, our relationship is perfect for disposing of unwanted items. So let's keep it up. Sure thing, buddy. Not that I have any idea what you're asking me for at this point. Anyone here? Oh, Hilda, perfect. I am, aren't I? Now, what do you need? I was thinking about getting another round of practice in, but I need a partner. And here you stand. So what do you say? What? But it's so late. Yes. But I just thought up a fantastic move, and I need to try it out or I'll never be able to sleep. Yeah, but I've already bathed, and I really don't want to get all sweaty and gross again. <laughs> Wait, is that you? You smell amazing. I know! I use floral oils. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I mix and match based on the situation or just... You know, mood. Wow, that's impressive. I bet you're wondering why I go to all that trouble, right? Well, scent is very important. One whiff of something nice can turn a person's entire day around. I get that, but I don't really think it's for me. I'm always training or hunting or something and the constant sweat would probably wash it right off. 
which is exactly why you should use floral scents. Then you'll smell like a delightful bouquet and not some kind of hog farmer. I mean, you're cute already, but you could be the whole package if you just leaned into it. You think I'm cute? No one's ever said that to me before. Or anything even remotely like it, actually. You know what? Let's just do it! Come to my tent. That's where I keep the stash. I really don't think this is for me. Oh, don't be silly. It is absolutely for you. No, really. Besides, I have to go practice that move. Well, too bad. But I'll come find you tomorrow, okay? Oh, this is so exciting! Wait, I don't think I actually agreed to anything. Never mind, I'm leaving. Bye! Yup, just a little bit of effort and she'll really be the whole package. I don't know about this. Did I use too much? <laughs> hmm. Uh, I don't not like it, but I'm also not sure it smells good exactly. Hey, Leone, what are you? Wait. <sighs> oh, you wore the oil. You smell so good. <laughs> It's amazing you noticed so quickly. Still, it smells different from the one you were wearing the other day. Did I do it right? Oh, for sure! And yeah, that's a scent I whipped up specifically for you. I mean, I could have just given you one of mine. But I knew there was a scent out there that would suit you perfectly. So I tried all sorts of different things to make the perfect Eau de Leone. That's for you and only you. It's the only one like it in the entire world. That feels so... fancy. And while I appreciate all the trouble you went through to make it, I still don't think it's for me. I'm sorry. I feel so bad about all of this. Oh, don't worry about it. I mean, sure, it's the only one like it in the world, but it's not actually valuable or anything. I just wanted to put my heart into making something specifically for you. I think you're really special. So I wanted you to have something special. Um... Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it sounds like I'm proposing to you or something. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Well, in that case, maybe I'll just wear it on special occasions. Uh, that would be great. Oh hey, there's actually something I've been wanting to try with my oils. Think you could help me out? I can't very well say no after all that. Okay, so here's the plan. First, you and I each wear a different scent at the same time. Then, when we're out together, they'll mix and create an even better scent. Huh, that's actually a pretty clever idea, Hilda. I know, right? Then again, I'm not sure how I feel about the idea of our scents intermingling. Then just don't think about it. Too late. So I can think about now, and it definitely feels weird. Yep, weird's the word. Well, now I feel weird. But you're still gonna help me out, right? You know what? Sure. I'm kind of curious to see how all this plays out. Phew. 
Guess that's good enough for today. Leone, I should have known it was you making all this racket so deep into the night. Oh, hey Lawrence. Yeah, I usually get an extra session or two in by myself after everyone else finishes their drills. A good mercenary is always ready for battle, you know. There's no telling when one might break out. <laughs> so even your mind is as sharp as a blade. Come to think of it, I was relieved to hear you had become a mercenary. And yet, pangs of guilt clawed at my heart. Huh? Why? What's that got to do with you? Quite a bit, if I may be frank. Your home, San, sits nestled firmly within House Gloucester territory. Embarrassing as it may be to admit, I hadn't entirely realized that fact when we began at the Officer's Academy. But once the school shut down, I began to wonder what became of the students who hailed from our lands. I couldn't help but investigate further. Uh-huh. And that's when you found out where I was from. What I'd been through. Yes. As the heir to House Gloucester, it is my natural-born duty to concern myself with the well-being of my citizens. It must have been difficult indeed, scrounging up the funds required to attend Garrick Mock. I would hate for someone who has already been through so much to suffer any further hardship. Well, some of the money we paid the church got back to us when the academy closed, at least. But that's pretty much it. Not an ounce of help finding a job. And definitely nothing from the Count. So I started training, sharpening my skills as a mercenary. The rest was luck. I am truly sorry, Leone. Allow me to apologize personally, both as your former classmate and as a noble in my father's stead. Stop that. It's not your fault. I chose to leave my village. I'm the one who decided to try and make it on my own. And I would have been protected by the nobility if I'd stayed in the village, right? But that's not the path I picked. Honestly? It wouldn't surprise me if more commoners start making decisions for themselves someday. You mean to say the nobility will become obsolete? That's not what I said. There are plenty of people out there who still depend on you for protection. That's not going to change. At the same time, I don't think you could keep every commoner safe even if you wanted to. The time we're living through is proof enough of that. So I'm sure you'll get plenty more people who make the exact same choice I did. Probably not for a while, though. An era of change at the heart of the nobility. Commoners that are no longer content with just being commoners. Hmm. Ah, the simple joys of a refreshing morning's exercise. Oh, hey, Lawrence. Kind of early for you, isn't it? What are you doing here? In truth, I was waiting for you, Leone. I merely decided to fit in a spot of training in the meanwhile. For me? There's something I was hoping to speak to you about. Do you recall our last conversation here? You said, the day may come that more commoners begin to make their own choices, begin to live without relying on the nobility. Sure, I remember. What about it? Well, your words were quite shocking to me. I've spent no small amount of time turning them over in my mind since. If you speak true, I wonder how I, as a noble, should proceed. Huh. And? You reach any grand conclusions? Well, it is an ironclad rule of the nobility that the commoners living on our land fall under our protection. And yet, some still slip through our fingers. That is simply the state of things in today's world. In a way, you are one of them, though you did choose this path of your own accord. Hold on. Did you really have to put it like that? 
I didn't slip through anyone's fingers. I jumped out all on my own. Well, yes, I suppose you did. My apologies. In truth, I find it exceedingly difficult to stand in the shoes of the everyman while also pushing matters forward as a noble. But if I'm unable to do exactly that, I have no hope of preserving the stability of my territory. As such, I am looking to bring an exceptional commoner into the ranks at House Gloucester to act as my advisor. That's a surprise. I thought there was supposed to be some huge boundary between nobles and their people. I assure you, such a boundary still exists. But I've come to realize something of late. As we proceed into the uncertain future, more and more common folk will begin to break free of their defined roles. Such an era will be upon us before long. Your actions are proof enough of that. Whoa, slow down there. I don't think I'm some kind of great trailblazer or anything. <laughs> I've simply interpreted the meaning behind your words. I thank you for leading me to this realization. Yeah, still not seeing it. I don't need your thanks. Uh, Leonie, I had this idea with your story in mind. As for the commoner I would invite to House Gloucester, the proposal I mentioned earlier, how would you like to fill that role? I appreciate the invite, really. And I know it's supposed to be this huge honor, but there's other things I want to do in life. My dream is to become a mercenary just like the captain, and I'm already on the road to making that happen. I can't abandon that. I won't. Very well. I suppose I would not want to stand in the way of your dreams. In that case, I pray you succeed in your endeavors, but I'll be here should you ever change your mind. <laughs> Good to know I have a backup. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence. Oh, boy. I think I'm in over my head here. Not often I see you, Cy Raphael. What's wrong? Oh, Leone! I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you have a second to answer a question about bow making? Sure, go ahead. But you do know that all our bows are pre-supplied to us, right? No, I get that. Problem is, the ones they give us can't hold up to my muscles. Even if I draw the stream back really carefully, the bow still ends up snapping in half. You snap bows in half? That really shouldn't be possible. Anyway, I'm trying to make a bow that I can use in place of the ones I keep busting, but I can't seem to get it right. Well, you've come to the right gal. Give it here. Thanks, Leone. Okay, so it's much quicker to reinforce an existing bow instead of trying to make one from scratch. First, you wrap this around here and flex it like so. Then on the opposite end... And there you have it. I used animal tendons, which will absorb the force you place on the bow and make it even more pliant. This should be flexible enough to withstand even the burliest of your pulls. Give it a try. Oh, wow, look at that! I'm pulling with everything I've got and it's just fine! Thanks, Leone. <laughs> You're very welcome. But say, you're still pretty new to the bow, right? Yep, but I want to get better, because using it makes my muscles happy. In that case, I have an idea. I'm currently on guard duty, which means chasing off random bandits and monsters whenever I see them. Why don't you come with me on my next patrol? It'll be a great way to test your new weapon. Oh, that would be great! You're really incredible, Leone. No one can beat you when it comes to bow stuff. 
Well, I was born in a hunting village, so I guess it's sort of my thing. I imagine you've got different talents that just come naturally to you, right? And if I ever find myself struggling with one of your specialties, I'm sure you'll help me out. You bet. If you ever need a hand with food or workouts, I'm the man for you. Yeah, I'm a card-carrying member of the Clean Plate Club, so I don't need help in the eating department. Well then, just come to me if you ever want to put a little beef on your bod. Got any arrows left, Raphael? This is my last one. There are so many wolves. I can't believe we've run out of arrows. Guess all your archery skill doesn't mean much if you don't have arrows, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much the long and short of it. At this point, we just have to take with... Hang on, Leone. I got this. You've been helping me with archery, so now it's time for me to break out my specialty. Raphael, that was amazing! You saved us! It's all because you reinforced this bow for me. Yeah, but I had no idea that's how you were planning to use it. I mean, you just grabbed it by the end and started thrusting it like a spear. No wonder those wolves ran off. You probably scared them all to death. I'm just impressed this thing held up to all that punishment. Your enhancement saved the day, Leone. Still, the fact that I couldn't break it means I'll have to work out even harder till I can. Wait, no, that's a bad idea. And yet, my muscles are crying for some good breakage. I don't know, Leone, what do you think? Hey. Your muscles saved our hides, so if you want to smash that bow to splinters, knock yourself out. Still, I reinforced that thing pretty well, so you'll need to come at it with everything you've got. And if you do manage to snap it, I'll keep making new ones until I finally perfect a Raphael-proof bow. Now that's an idea I can get behind! I'll do what I'm good at, building muscles, and you do what you're good at, building bows. That way, we can combine our powers to be the toughest fighting duo in all of Bowdlin. <laughs> you may be right. I mean, I'm not sure if we'll be quite the force of nature you seem to think we'll be, but it'll definitely put our strong suits to good use. Say... Do you remember what I said when I first helped you reinforce that bow? I told you you'd help me with your specialty one day, just like I was helping you with mine. And guess what? That's exactly what happened today. I think this is the start of great things for us. I can't wait to see where we go from here. I'll be counting on you, big guy. Nice job, Leone. That's one of the biggest deer I've ever seen. Yeah, it's gonna make for a fine feast. Well, let's start breaking it down and... Hmm? Well, what's wrong? Ignatz, there's only one arrow in this deer. Hey, you're right. That's weird. I thought both of us hit the mark, but I guess not. These arrows are all standard issue, so there's no way to tell which one of us fired the kill shot. Well, my arrow felt great when I let it fly, so I think it's safe to assume this is mine. Maybe. It didn't penetrate very deep, so it might actually be mine. I can't draw my bow back as far as you, you know. But, I mean, it could easily be yours too. I don't actually know for sure. Hmm, it's true that it's not too deep. And you do have great aim. Nope, nope, it's mine. Has to be. The shot just felt too good when I let it go. 
I guess one of us could have hit a different deer. Although, I haven't actually seen any others. Doesn't matter. Pull the arrow out while I get ready to hang and skin it. Okay, sure. Huh? Hang on, there's something in... Ah! Oh. Hurry up, Big Knots. We've got to hang it and drain it before the blood congeals. Leone, look! I found the other arrow! Well, someone seems delighted. Where was it? In the deer. There was a shadowed arrowhead inside the wound, and after I dug around a bit, I also found splintered fragments of a shaft. Wait, so the first arrow hit the deer, and then the second one hit in the exact same place? It sure seems that way. That would also explain why the arrow we found was so shallow. Wow, that's seriously impressive. Yeah, we weren't off by so much as an inch. This is great news. I was so certain I'd hit the deer, but then I started doubting myself. I think it would have broken my brain if I was wrong. I worried I was losing my touch, too. <laughs> we were thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> I know, right? That's too funny. Honestly, you're such a crack shot, it would have been strange if you missed from that distance. And no one hunts better than you, Leone. Doesn't matter if we're hunting deer or trading blows on the battlefield. There's no one I'd rather have at my side than you. Same here. Now, let's take care of this deer so we can start that feast. Leone, you're alive! I thought you went and kicked the bucket! And I'm equally surprised to find you on the right side of the dirt. Still hunting for treasure while arrows rain down around you? I saw you speaking with a churlish-looking man near the gate earlier, Leone. What, him? Oh, he's just a mercenary I met a while back. I see. Given his filthy appearance, I thought he might be a wild bandit. <laughs> Not hardly. Although, if I'm being honest, he's more of a scavenger than a mercenary. A scavenger? Exactly. See, folks like him go to battlefields and loot anything worth a bit of coin that's lying around. Noble folk call them midden men. But that's a pretty lousy nickname. I've heard tales of such people, but... Yeah, they live in a different world from you and me. Honestly, you could probably live the rest of your life and never run into another one. I... had no idea. Hey, don't look so glum. There's nothing wrong with not knowing about that kind of life. Except that I wish to know more about commoners. But in order to do so, I would need to speak with all manner of different people. Leone, may I ask you something? I once read something that has stayed with me, and I wonder if you might confirm it. Sure, hit me. Well, one particular book stated that the cookies and cakes eaten by commoners are not sweet. But then another book claimed that commoners do not actually eat desserts at all. So, do they not eat sweets? Or are the sweets they prefer simply not honey? Hmm. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I ate plenty of treats as a kid that weren't sweet at all. I can't even imagine. There's no way for most commoners to afford the sweets that nobles enjoy. So instead, we eat unsweetened treats. Might be better to call them snacks, really. Commoner snacks? They're probably different from what you're used to. They're hard, dry, and look kind of plain. Anyway, 
you make a rough dough out of whatever grains you have lying around and fry it up. It's basic, but it's filling. So if I were to become a commoner, I would also eat these snacks. I'd never eat sweet candy again. Well, not every commoner is forced to live on snacks. I bet you could get your hands on sweets if you were a merchant or an artisan or something. But anyway, you're a noble. Why are you worried? I... I'm sorry. It was merely a hypothetical. Thank you, Leone. You were very helpful. Was I? Huh. Well, if you've got any other questions, feel free to fire away. Oh, and for the record, the kids in my village were always happy with whatever snacks we could get. They were simple, sure, but also good in a weird way. You should try them sometime. A simple taste, is it? Intriguing. Maybe I should try making one of these snacks and see if Leone wants to eat it with me. I can't believe I didn't catch anything. Guess it's just that kind of day. Oh, hello, Leone. Hey, Marianne. Where are you off to? Nowhere. Um, I mean, I'm just on my way back from the stables. And you? Coming back from the world's lousiest hunting trip? I didn't even find a single track. And it's the first time I've been hunting in a while, too. Huh. Talk about a waste of time. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but what is that you're holding? Oh, this? Just some weeds. Felt bad coming back completely empty-handed. I figured I could use some to fill up my meal, so I went and gathered them. Also grabbed some medicinal herbs while I was at it. Is that yellow flower edible, too? <laughs> no, not at all. It's not poisonous, but it's really bitter. It's one of my favorite flowers, though. They're so pretty, don't you think? I saw some blooming and just had to pick one. Yes, it's beautiful. All those tiny blossoms blooming from it. It seems almost... heroic. Merely looking at it gives me the strength to continue living for another day, no matter what obstacles may come. Can't say I've ever given it quite that much thought. Tell you what, why don't you take it? Are you sure? After you went and picked it... Hey, it's just a flower. It's yours. Thank you. No, I'll feel bad keeping this lovely flower all to myself. Maybe I can put it in a bouquet and place it in the mess hall for everyone to enjoy. You're always so thoughtful, Marianne. Oh, no, it's nothing. It's something, all right. But speaking of flowers, are there any you want me to keep an eye out for? I can pick whatever you like next time I go hunting. Hmm... Well, perhaps some mountain gooseberry? The little green berries, right? Oh man, I love those! You can boil them up into jam, but I usually just eat the suckers by the handful wherever I find them. Yes, I was thinking they'd be perfect to feed the birds. Wait, you're giving them to birds? I'll eat them too, together with the birds. But there's something you have to watch out for. Uh, you mean the thorns, right? You're pretty knowledgeable about those little guys. Have you picked them before yourself? No, but the birds told me all about them. The birds told you. <laughs> Marianne, you actually made a joke! I love it! No, it's not... Uh, um, well... I'm glad it made you happy. Captain! 
You again, Leone. <laughs> what is it today? Seeing as you're strong as ever, Captain Gerald, I was hoping you'd train with me. Your eyes are playing tricks. I'm an old man. I'd never be able to keep up with you kids at the rate you're improving. You can't mean that. I'm nowhere near a match for you. But hearing that kind of praise from my hero makes me want to devote myself to training even more. Aren't you a little old for childhood heroes? Maybe, but I'm still happy. I worked my whole life to be a mercenary like you, after all. And now I get to fight at your side? Dreams really do come true. I'm glad. It's not often childhood dreams actually come to pass. I recall you always scampering a few paces behind me as a kid. You'd stare at me and ask all kinds of questions, even when I was clearly too busy to answer. Well, I was just hoping you'd teach me about martial arts and tactics and, and that kind of thing. Before your job ended and you left, I mean. You couldn't have learned much. I wasn't there long. Yet here you are, standing strong and tall. You have no one but yourself to thank for that. You grew up without any guidance from this old captain. I'm glad to call you my apprentice. Thank you. I promise to make you proud. And one day, I'm going to surpass you. That's my new dream. <laughs> That's the spirit. And I'm not just surpassing you, but your kid, too. I had no idea they were so strong. Guess the topic never came up when I was in Son. We've both been through a lot. I'm jealous about all the time you two got to spend traveling together. I bet their strength is due to your instruction. Eh, all I did was teach the basics of Merc life. Natural talents likely behind the swordsmanship and tactical ability. Which means normal folks like me have to put in a hundred times the effort just to catch up. Don't sell yourself short. I wouldn't have taken you on if you didn't have talent. Captain Gerald, I have a request to make of you. Ugh, someone's formal today. Well, out with it. When this war is over, please let me join your mercenary company. You'll go back to wandering the world, right? So please, Captain, please let me come with you. <sighs> I'm happy to hear you want to join us, Leone. That's not enough for me to say yes. No. Why not? There are two reasons. The biggest is that I'm thinking about stepping down from my position as captain, so the ultimate call isn't really mine to make. Then who will lead the mercenaries? Couldn't tell you. That's up to them. The second reason is that I think you should start your own band of mercenaries instead. You... do? You're a mercenary in your own right now, and a fantastic general in this army. With that kind of experience, there's no point in going to work for someone else. Do you really think so? Of course. Someone with your skill set would be a fine addition to any group of mercs, including mine. But you're planning to surpass me and the kid, right? You can't exactly do that if you're working for us. You'll have to build your own band of mercs from the ground up and win your reputation just like I did. You'll need to give it your all if you want to create something better than what I've built. Hmm. Then that's what I'll do. I'll form my own band of mercenaries that's every bit as good as yours. That's why I'm proud to call you my apprentice. But in exchange, I have a condition. 
you have to remain as captain until I catch up to you. Uh, well, I guess it's a captain's job to live with an apprentice's reckless decisions. But I don't have all the time in the world. <laughs> this body's falling apart as it is. So get yourself up and running before I shrivel away. <laughs> Got it? It's a promise. I'm looking forward to the day. Too? Nah, just grabbing something I forgot earlier. Is this normal training time for you, Leonie? Well, yeah. We've been so busy lately, I've had to squeeze it in whenever I can. Huh. You work hard for a mercenary. I'm just starting out in my career, so I can't afford to slack off now. I only started training as a merc after the Officer's Academy closed, remember? Meanwhile, you were one before you even came to the Academy. You've got years of experience on me. Still, you're skilled and you've got brains, which means you're more promising than the average rookie. I hope you're right. I have to distinguish myself at some point, or else I won't be able to face the captain. You have a captain? Yep. He visited my village when I was a kid, and I practically begged him to make me his apprentice. I was probably a huge nuisance, but I was so desperate to get out of my village and be independent. Gerald treated me like an annoying little brat at first, but eventually he taught me for real. He showed me everything. Tricks of the trade, standard training routines, basic strategy. Don't you have a mentor? Someone who showed you the ropes? A mentor? Hmm. I do have a mentor, in a sense. You know, someone who occasionally gives me advice and stuff. That sounds sort of vague, but I guess there can be all kinds of mentors. Either way, you still have loads more experience than me. I need to work hard so I can catch up with you. Well, if you ever want help from an old pro, just say the word. Thanks. I'm glad to have a role model I can count on. Hey, you got a minute? Sure, what do you need? Wait, don't tell me. You're here for some advice from a pro. Actually, I am. You know how all the top mercenaries have some kind of specialty? Some excel at swordsmanship, some are adept in subterfuge, and so on. Even you have your own special thing. That incredible, mysterious power. Anyway, I was just thinking that I need something like that, too. Mysterious, huh? Yeah, I guess you're not wrong. As for you, Leone... I thought the bow was your thing. If you want to make a name for yourself, shouldn't it be with that? I was raised in a hunting village, so yeah, I do know my way around a bow. But a bow and arrow isn't very helpful in the middle of a heated battle, is it? I figure I'll need to do better than that if I want to be a first-rate mercenary. Hmm, you can use all kinds of weapons, right? And you can even ride horses. Sure, I know the basics, but it's more of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of situation. That may be the case, but if you look at it from another angle, those skills make you a pretty powerful mercenary. What do you mean? You know the fundamentals for everything. There's nothing you're particularly bad at. Well, yeah, but I'm just average at all of them. Even so, a mercenary who can do everything decently well would actually be in pretty high demand. 
Strategically, your options expand significantly if you've got even one person who can react to any change in battle. Meanwhile, mercs with only one specialty are practically useless in some situations. Like how some people don't know what to do if they get stuck in a role that doesn't suit them. Exactly. That's why a versatile mercenary who can adapt to anything is a valuable asset. Hmm, but then I'm still just an asset. It doesn't sound like that'll earn me a reputation as one of the best. For that, you just need to keep working hard and improving your skills, yeah? If you're average at everything, then that means you have plenty of room to grow. Yeah, I guess that's true. Your strength is that you can do anything. So if you keep getting better at everything and end up even a tiny bit above average, then I'd shine brighter than any one-trick pony on the battlefield. And then if you keep showing off all you can do, your name will get around and you'll be one of the best in no time. I see. Thanks. You've really given me a lot to think about. Glad to help. Though, I wouldn't really call myself first rate either. So we'll both have to keep working as hard as we can. Yeah, let's do it. We'll be the best of the best. I bet we'll even get our own special nicknames. Oh, it's the captain. Yeah, handle it any way you want. This should be an easy job for you. I'll report back when it's done. Sounds good. We're gonna take care of some other matters in the meantime. Ugh. Why are you making that noise, Leone? You got an upset stomach or something? No, I don't. <sighs> you know how the captain and his mercenaries joined forces with us? Yeah, I'm so glad you get to fight with him again. Oh, wait. This is the first time you two are actually fighting together, right? Yep. I haven't seen him since we parted ways when I was a kid. I've never been in a battle with him or anything. So, yeah, I'm happy, but... No! Oh, I can't take it! Wait a minute. Is this about his kid? Yeah. Though we're practically the same age. But only one of us has the captain's full confidence and a cool nickname. We're both mercenaries for crying out loud. And I was the captain's first apprentice. But you're not family. You can bet that Gerald would have trained any child of his from birth a whole lot longer than you. Ugh, you have a point there. And if you want to talk about age, Alois has been with him since their night days. Which means it's likely that he was actually Gerald's first apprentice, right? Hey, you're right. I didn't even think about that. In any case, it's kind of a given you wouldn't be on the same level. I mean, they haven't just studied under Gerald. They've had years of on-the-job training with him. Plus, you don't have any weird powers. You mean like you do? Yeah, but our powers are completely different. To be honest, I want to best the Ashen Demon too. I've been striving to do that this whole time, but still haven't managed to pull it off. Is that right? You know, even if we teamed up, I'm not so sure we'd win. I don't know about that. With the two of us together, I think we might actually have a shot at it. In fact, I think my money would be on us. Want to set up a challenge sometime and see what happens? I'm all for it. After all, the captain has a saying. Better to fight dirty and win than play fair and lose. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Gerald. For a mercenary, all that matters is the outcome. Exactly! You know, I'm really glad you're here. Same goes for you, Leonie. 
Now let's stay sharp and show the Ashen Demon up our own way. 